Good morning, everybody. I have something special to share with you today. But I just want to fix the phone because it's a little off kilter. So I'm trying to adjust it here. Hope this will work. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> there, that's better. My dad had also learned carpentry and house building. And he was always a sticker for having things properly balanced and to use a bob line so the walls we built were straight and to use a level and the bevel and that takes me back 50 years ago to home probably today I left home 50 years ago to join the seminary and I can't believe the readings we have today particularly the psalm. And for me, the psalm is an anchor today in the whole story. And it's, it's such a rich psalm, Psalm 24. And we actually pray this psalm regularly on major feast days always. And especially coming up to Christmas, who is the king of glory? Lift up your portals and let in the king of glory. Today, uh, it's a different angle on the psalm. It's, um, and it's a great place to be doing this, actually. But it says, to the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. And somehow we also had these sentiments a couple of days ago, I think, in one of the commentaries. Um, the readings, you know, bring us to that contemplation of reality. And for those of us, and I understand we have some good friends here who uh, may be agnostic or atheist, and, and you are most welcome, and I hope you feel comfortable. And I would say that um, for those of us who have faith, it's an extraordinary realization that the whole, everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. That's a huge, huge uh, framework. Even this crow that just came in here right now will open up a little light for the crow, one of the most intelligent birds. Amazingly intelligent birds. Everything, even this crow and its feathers and its breakfast belong to the Lord. He, the Lord has created everything. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it, all the fish of the sea, all the birds of the air. Remember when God <laughs> complains about the, the false worship of the people at the temple in Jerusalem? And he says, I, I, I don't want your sacrifices. Uh, everything in the mountains and the hills and everything belongs to me. It's all mine. You know, you're not giving me anything. Uh, I want your hearts. I want your honesty. I want your uprightness. And that's a challenge for all of us all the time. I want your heart. I want, I want you to, to respect the others. And there's another Psalm linked with this very much. It's Psalm 15. And I encourage you to go in there and check it out. It's a short psalm. And this psalm is about how you can be in God's tent. And the ticket of admission to God's tent is how you treat others. You don't slander them. You don't wrong them. You don't do them injustice. You don't cheat them. You don't steal from them. Again, it's the Ten Commandments. It's basically the path of life. And this is the, the encounter and the communion with God. You don't do violence to them. You respect them. And because they're in the image and likeness of God. So that's the key to worship, the key to true praise, the key to true adoration. True, it's a, it's a source of blessing. And also for our society, a society that can live like that, where people won't be stolen from or cheated or uh, rejected it's a horrible poverty I heard a commentary uh, a German friend there up in Frankfurt 
uh, every morning he's doing his little bit in German. It's very short and sweet, but um, he also had a personal encounter with Mother Teresa. And, uh, and I was blessed to have that also, actually, um, in a different location, different place. But that's fine. So uh, she had a great line that the greatest poverty was to be rejected. A world that doesn't have place for you is a very poor world. A world that doesn't have place for another person is a very poor world. The rejection and the annihilation, the, the dismissal of others, the, the displacement of others, and the care for others is the path. The care for the, for the neediest, for the most vulnerable, for the... And, and you know, none of us is, is um, immune to rejecting others in, in a comment, not looking at somebody. It can just be that, not noticing them, not recognize them, a wink, a nod of the head. The Irish farmers would, would lift their cap, you know, they just touched the cap, the tip of the cap, and, and it was a, a greeting and you were recognized. Your neighbor was recognized. A traveler on the road that you didn't know was recognized because he's a human being he's not just a tractor driving there or a guy with a horse and a cart it's it's so beautiful all of this but anyway i'm getting off track here a little bit to the lord belongs the earth and all that fills it the lords of the earth and its fullness the world and all those who dwell in it and all those who dwell in it belong to the lord all of them everyone tell me one person that doesn't belong to the lord from this perspective of faith, all the people up there in Lebanon, all the people in Syria, all the people over there in Jordan, which we can see from here. If you just look there left of the, of the little White House there, the Lake House. So that's Jordan down there. Now all the people here in Israel belong to the Lord. All the people belong, all who dwell here. This is Psalm 24, people. This is an amazing psalm, and it's a psalm for the King of Glory to enter his temple, which is really all of creation, God's temple. This is the first big temple. This is where we meet God, where God is present to us. It's just so magnificent. It's just so amazing, so beautiful, so true. The Lord's are the earth and his fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas. And there we have the seas. And I'm not going over today to our little Mississippi for the rivers. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. And the people who are familiar with these Psalms, who wrote these Psalms, are familiar with the Nile and with the Euphrates, the Tigris, and even the Jordan here which obviously has a bigger name for us in, in, our, in our faith story. And yet is a little tiny stream compared to the Nile and the Tigris, the uh, Tigris, whatever, however you pronounce it, the, the, uh, the Euphrates, all these, these uh, he found it upon the rivers. Imagine the, the importance of the Nile for all of Africa like there's I think 17 countries are watered by the Nile not just Egypt it's 17 countries deep down into the basin of Africa so then <clears throat> to the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it and this uh, is expressed in the in the miracle today because Peter is washing his nets, finished the work. And ready to go home. And there is Jesus and When he's finished, he says to Peter, something that's written here in stone. Uh, sunrise stroll and chat, people. 
thing jumped into Wi-Fi again. So here we have a duke in Altum. Go out into the deep. And the fishermen like the shallow waters where the fish are feeding. They like to do it at night time, like Tim Gray come to this morning in the Augustine Institute uh, podcast for the commentaries of the day. The fishermen like to do it in the more in the night time. That's when the better time is to fish. But let's go inside, and then. <clears throat> I didn't turn on the lights in here, sorry about that. And now the door is locked to the sacristy, so we leave it like that. And Peter goes out into the deep and he casts his nets. And you know the story, it, they filled it. They had to get an extra boat. They were sinking. There were so many fish that they were bringing both boats to the point of sinking. Because to the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. That wasn't... Uh, a total surprise. Maybe they even would think of this psalm. And they were discovering then Jesus in the process because then Peter says, Lord, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. Amazing, isn't it? See the boat floating on the Sea of Galilee? So when the gospel is preached here, it's uh, when uh, proclaimed, it's like Jesus teaching us from the boat. Let me go over here on the side a little bit so you can see that perspective as well. So here you have the boat, so it's being proclaimed here and everybody here sitting can hear Jesus teaching from the boat at the Sea of Galilee. Just an amazing genius gift idea that was well received here in Magdala and turned into reality. The boat's built of Lebanese cedar, by the way like the first temple in Jerusalem, donated by King Hiram of Lebanon, friend, befriended with Solomon. May the peoples in this region be become, become befriended and not alienated and antagonistic. May that happen again, Lord. And I want to bring you to one more chapel because it's so pertinent today. And it's my story because 50 years ago today, I left home working with my dad on the farm. A seminarian from the seminary in Dublin came to pick me up. I think of him, I think of his widow. He didn't continue uh, in our community. After a few years, he discerned it was not his calling. And he uh, went on, had a married life, an extraordinary man. We have the tabernacle here because of the heat, and we weren't able to air condition the boat chapel this summer because of the lack of pilgrims. So here we have the fishermen and Capernaum in the background. We can go and see some detail. And we have another family here like, and their boats. And there we understand James and John, also fishermen with Peter and Andrew. We're reading from Luke chapter 6 at the moment, and this is uh, the text that's given here because it's in the synoptics, it's Matthew chapter 4. But it's in all the Gospels, the story of the call of the fishermen to become fishers of men. And that's, I left my, the farm, and I'm not claiming any greatness for doing that, it's just pure gift. 50 years ago, it was probably today, I don't think it was yesterday and I don't think it was tomorrow. I think it's really probably today <laughs> because on the, we had seven days of retreat. I might be off by one day. I won't totally bet, um, uh, bet on that. Maybe it's possible, maybe my siblings will remember. So I'm just filled with gratitude. And you know, we live a life uh, with the vow of poverty. We don't own anything. And there's also the vow of chastity, the vow of obedience. And the vow of poverty, you don't own anything. And yet the whole world is mine. I've been welcomed by so many people, so many friends, so many people would take me in as family, in their homes, got a place to sleep, had a meal, got help in different ways to do different 
different tasks, uh, teamwork together. You know, the amazing thing about this text is Peter, Jesus says to Peter, come follow me. And they all left their nets and followed him. <laughs> and it's amazing the, the blessings that come in life. Uh, it's a day for me filled with gratitude. I hope it's also filled with gratitude for you because you also, the whole earth and the whole world is yours. And it's an interesting expression of faith in the Corinthians that um, Paul expresses. And he says, you all belongs to you and you belong to Christ, like Peter experienced at the lake and the catch of fish, and Christ belongs to the Father, the eternal Word of God, uttered from the Father. What an extraordinary world view, reality view, holistic view. And it's a view filled with love and light and the openness for generosity. And the only thing that brings darkness are our faults and our sins, our failures. But the Lord is merciful rich in mercy. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Uh, I thank the Lord that all this is possible, that he has blessed everyone so much. And there is a lot of suffering in the world. And like Mother Teresa, whom we remember today, we're all encouraged and motivated by her generosity. In, in showing the world a way to serve even one person that's in trouble near you, one tear dry, one discouraged person, a kind, encouraging word spoken, uh, an act of love for somebody that didn't receive any kiss, any hug, any appreciation for a long time. God bless you. See you later, alligators. <laughs>